Hi everyone, welcome to Taste to Explore. My name is Darlene and on this episode I bring to you another classic dish. We are making empanadas from scratch, the dough. So stick around and the ingredients are really simple. You probably already have it on hand already. So stick around as I walk over to the basic ingredients to get started. So here we go. I have one stick of butter that I have cubed and one tablespoon of shortening. These two must be very, very cold, very chilled. I had it in the freezer for a good 20 minutes before taking it out. Then I have one egg, one whole egg with one teaspoon of distilled vinegar, a half a cup of water, very chilled and with ice as well and three cups of flour and then that's it that's it so simple as that basic ingredients that you probably already have on hand already so now let's get to it you can do it by hand um takes a little time not too much you know old school way of course it's by hand but i'm not doing that i have a machine i'm going to use my food processor but if you want to do it by hand you can use a pastry cutter or a fork or your hands whichever you like. So right now, I'm going to use my machine right here. So in my food processor, I'm going to place my flour. Okay, so while I finish putting my flour, now I'm going to put in my butter and shortening. The butter is going to give us such a nice flavor while the shortening is going to give it a nice crispy texture a lot of uh, countries make it differently they only put all shortening or all butter and then that's fine too but this way gives it tons of flavor that i personally like begin putting this on and then it's going to be silent for use because it's going to be really you know noisy so i'm going to put it on silent you're going to see it, but you won't hear all that noise, okay? Mixing, and I don't know if you can tell, it looks like coarse sand. That's all the shortening and butter combined with the salt and flour. So we want it to look like coarse sand, and it's perfect right now. So right now, we're going to put in our liquids together. I'm just going to beat my egg. Not 100% perfect, but you know. Something, something. Okay. Now, I'm going to put some of my water in here. Why not all of it? Well, it all depends on your environment. If it's too hot or humid in your apartment, you might need more liquid or you might need less liquid. Ooh, made a big old mess. So we're gonna see how much liquids do we need. Sometimes it varies. You might need a half a cup or you might need a little less. So we'll see how it turns out now. I'm going to pour it all in and then we're going to mix. So it's done. My empanada dough is done. It took no time putting together. Now I wound up using one fourth cup of cold liquid you know it varies so I'm gonna either use like I told you from one half a cup to one fourth cup be very careful if you have one of these food processors because these blades are no joke I already hurt myself one time already the dough is a little bit sticky a little tacky it's fine it's done it's and it looks great So I'm just going to make it into a disc and I'm going to place it in the refrigerator for 20 minutes to a half an hour. What happens is that it needs to chill 
because it has a lot of fats running in here, you know, with the shortening and butter. And it has to relax. The gluten has to relax. Right now, this is the perfect time if you just want to store it and just work on this another day. You have your empanada dough ready. You can definitely just bag this up again, put it in a freezer um, freezer container or freezer zip block bag, and you know, take it out whenever you want. But we're not gonna do it like that. I wanna use this and make this today. So Hi guys, welcome back. Well, my empanada dough was in the refrigerator for 25, 30 minutes, and now it's time to make our disc. And this is how it's gonna be done. Now, if you see right here, I have my board with flour, and now I'm just gonna put a little bit more flour on top so it doesn't stick to my rolling pin. And we are gonna shape this bad boy out, and I'm just gonna stretch it out like so. And with a rolling pin, you just shape it out. And you keep on rolling it. The dough is easy, it's nice, it's smooth, it's, it's just perfect right now. Welcome back. Well, I stretched out my empanada dough, 49 by 58. Um, you want it to be as thin as possible, but as thin as possible, but you don't want it super thin because you don't want it to break when it's in the filling. And right now, it's perfect. Right now, I have um, a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper and a little bit of flour so it doesn't stick to it. I did two already, but I wanted to show you if you didn't have a cookie, uh, a biscuit cutter, what you can use is a bowl. And you can use any one of your bowls, small or large. You know, it's really up to you on the size that you want. You just make an indent with a knife or a spatula. And you just go around to just to try to cut out its shape. Make your all your desired shapes and sizes. I'm trying to get this out right now. Okay, you see? And then you have your empanada. The thickness right here, it's not too thin. It's not too thick. It's like about an inch thick. And you see how it's not as see-through? That's fine. Oh, welcome back. Well, my empanadas are done. And let me show you them right now. This was the last one that I did, so of course, it looks a little, you know, funny looking, but that's okay. We put nothing to waste around here. So I'm going to teach you how to fill them up. We're going to fry them, and then we're going to eat them. So stick around. So I'm just going to put a little bit of meat filling. This is ground beef, the, um, you know, the traditional meat fillings that you eat this with, which, which it will be called picadillo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but yeah. That's that. So you can do that. Just put a little water all around. So that way, just to ensure that it doesn't pop open while it's frying. I got some oil heating up here. You can use corn oil, um, vegetable oil, any kind of clear oil will do. And you see how cute and cute little bite size these things are and then you're just going to take a fork and you're just going to press them down this ensures that it locks it in place so it doesn't open up while it's frying up and then I like to do both sides just to make sure just to give it that security that it's not going to open while it's frying you see how nice and golden they look they're ready to be come out now um, it takes just like a minute or less on each side so you definitely want to watch over them and flip them back and forth just until you get that nice light tan golden brown and then you want to put them on a sh two napkins on a plate whoa you see that one whoa he doesn't want to be on the plate 
<laughs> okay. And then I'm going to take the other one out. Hi guys, welcome back. Well, I did some of my empanadas, as you can see here. They look so fabulous. Because this one came out of the the uh, oil, you know, in the beginning. So, and look, they're so crispy. They look juicy. I can't wait to try it. It's a little smoky. Mm, mm, mm. Let me tell you something. Sure, I know you can buy these pre-made in a freezer food section for like a couple of dollars, but homemade, you can't put a price on that. Um, you can fill it with tons of different fillings. I am going to teach you how to make this beef filling soon, so stay tuned for that. And there's so many other feelings I must bring you. Don't worry. I'm, I'm going to hook you up. Don't worry about them. Just stick to them. Thank you for watching. Thank you for enjoying today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Oh, and if you have a feeling that you want in mind for me to make, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment below on what you want me to make next. So, take care. Bye-bye.